Hey everyone, um, so grateful to be here today. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, hope your week's off to a good start. I'm just waiting for Nadine to join us. Um, so grateful we're having these conversations and um, whoever, you know, and whoever is joining us and listening in, whether it's live or on the replay, um, I feel like some of the topics we talk about are timeless. So, and this one, as a matter of fact, we had decided to do last month, but then we postponed that chit chat. Um, and now we're here again, and it's even, I think, more resonant um, for both of us. So we're going to get into that once, once Nadine gets here. But as always, we are supported by the new moon we just had. We try to have these conversations in that energy and with new moons it's always built after the peak of the new moon so that was on friday july 5th we're at the 8th and also astrologically speaking because we always kind of tie that into what we're going through whether we really believe in that or not those energies are there to support us and right now we're just um in the uh Along with the new moon, we have Sirius, which is the brightest star in the sky, known as our spiritual sun, also conjunct the sun and moon and creating a very powerful time. It's opening up the portal to the Lion's Gate, which is coming up on August 8th, 8-8. And this is a time for, and I know it might sound um, repetitive or cliche or whatever, where it's peak manifestation time. It's probably the most powerful time of the calendar year to um, really set intention, really come back to yourself. However, that looks for you. Everybody has their own ways of connecting with themselves, um, taking care of themselves, their self-care practices. And but this is really calling us because it's this uh, Sirius and Orion and the Earth are a lot in alignment and uh, with the sun. This is a time um, that the Sirius is known as the spiritual sun. So we may be feeling called to either start a spiritual practice or deepen one we already have. And I just feel like it's always so timely because like everything we're going to get into it, but everything that I've been going through kind of in real time this last week or so is all coming back to that place of opening up to something that we might not even realize that is there. Um, and that happens through having a, some sort of practice um, of just being with ourselves and letting those um, wisdoms, I think, come through in ways we might not even realize, you know, that they were there. So it's through cultivating that practice that we can um, open up to a deeper truth, deeper wisdoms that can help us kind of process what we're dealing with in our lives. Okay, so Nadine is here now. Let me just... Hi, Hopefully that worked. There she is. Let me just adjust here. Hi, Nadine. Hello. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. That's good. good. And I was just to... sharing as you, I was waiting for you about the astrological energies yes. and how the new moon, like we just had, and um, not to repeat myself, but to kind of go back to with the new moon, the energies build after the peak. So we're still in that energy, even though it happened on Friday. And mm -hmm. also we're um, with that new moon was a conjunction with Sirius, which is the largest, most brightest star in the sky, also known as our spiritual sun. So which may be why, explain why we might be called to, um, to either establish or deepen a, a spiritual practice. And like I said, before that can look different for everybody because it's all in what is resonant for us, how we can find ways to give ourselves that space for whatever truths and wisdoms inside of us that we might not even know, um, mm -hmm. but just allowing the space for that to happen. And that happens through regularly doing some sort of 
practice, whether it's walking in nature for you or meditation or just being in silence, or sometimes it's something we need even more on top of that, like a Reiki session or whatever that yeah. kind of opens us up to, even if we don't even know what it is, it opens us up to kind of have the ability to identify and just feel our way through that. So, mm. which is also supportive in, you know, what, and I had said, you know, we're, we're coming back and I don't even think I named the topic we're talking about, but that we had established this last time and we postponed that conversation, but this, as all of our topics usually are, it's a timeless topic about kind of um, repeating something that we thought we already had healed or worked on within ourselves and, um, yeah, everything that comes through with that, because there's layers to that. There is. There's so many layers, aren't there? And that's right. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But I just want to go back a little bit to what you, something you said earlier and pick up mm -hmm. on it. There is this energy at the moment. And a lot of people, I'm, I'm getting this, people saying it to me, you know, they're doing so much. We're sort of halfway through the year, aren't we, at the moment? And they're doing so much and they don't really know what to go. And they're going, I've got to do more. I've got to do more. And I've got to say, I'm like that as well. I can feel mm -hmm. I've not done enough, that kind of thing. I'm not enough. I haven't done enough, that kind of thing. But I just want to say that the way that I feel at the moment, and you've just touched on it as well, is that sometimes we don't need to do anything. And that can be quite difficult mm -hmm. to hear mm -hmm. and quite scary to do because we're doing less <laughs> right but we can do less can't we we can do less we can trust the universe um and someone said to me the other day and i've taken it to heart that the first part of the year we were doing all the work and it was all chaotic and there was a lot going on and now we are being we're in a place now where if we do just trust the universe as we say all the time we're almost like it's just going to happen it's going to happen without us doing too much hard work so as i said I took that to my heart because that's what i needed and wanted to mm -hmm. hear and mm -hmm. maybe we can try that you know try the fact of let's not push so much let's know we are enough we have done enough and see you know there's no harm in trying that is there and that's a little bit of a belief as well isn't it yeah so do you do, do you feel that a little bit do you think you can trust that oh my well? gosh Yes, I love that you just brought that in because I know for me and I've been feeling that too. And I think I shared on a post um, in the last month or so. I can't recall exactly when, but like a message I heard earlier in the year and I needed to bring that back in last week when so it was like, stop trying so hard or stop trying to be perfect. And I think that um, and that was hard for me to receive because I think we're so conditioned to nothing happens unless we're taking action. Yeah. And that's not always the case because we need to leave room. That's the what we call the divine masculine is like action. But we need to balance that with our feminine side of receiving and to open up that space of just like, if we don't just like stop and pause for a minute, like we're gonna miss something. And I think that, like, even when we don't know, I feel like, so one of the biggest lessons that I've had around when I'm not feeling good or when I'm feeling, like, low energy or what, is just to kind of stop and allow myself to do nothing, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, I feel like that can be the biggest way that the, the messages or the wisdom comes through, yeah. and you know. Yes. Yes. We, of, miss, we miss it, don't we? If we're too busy, we miss the lessons, the learning. Right. I think this is this is sometimes what we're going to talk about in a minute. If this is sometimes where things need to be repeated because we've missed it, we haven't taken it in, we haven't done it in a way. But I think it's so important to go actually stopping, doing nothing, taking that pause is so so valuable. But as I say, it's hard for a lot of us to do, isn't it? And and I mean, I, I just refer. I mean, people know that you give me beautiful Reiki through distance mm -hmm. through the miles yeah. and you you really it, that is a time for me to just give it up and go i'm going to do nothing i'm going to trust you trust the reiki trust the universe and really just let it go and sometimes i need an excuse and that is an excuse you know just like you say yes walking out in nature taking time everything sometimes it's quite hard to do mm -hmm. um, because we don't let ourselves but maybe like booking a session with someone like i do with you you know that makes me feel a little bit like I'm doing something, but I also know I'm 
I'm also doing the rest and the relaxation as well. So just a tip for some people to think maybe doing that, doing it that way will help. And I would recommend everyone to book a session with you because it's wonderful. But mm -hmm. you you shared you shared with me something that I think was so so valuable, and you put a post out recently that had it there to remind me because I know it was there just for me. <laughs> I bet it wasn't, but I took that. Um, it was that, and I'm going to read it out because I've got it here. When you don't know what to do or are feeling stuck, go back to the fundamentals. Ask yourself, how can I love you today? And that gives me chills because you suggested that to me. I had a little, I'd just share with everyone, I had a little thing about I can't do mirror work. I can't look at myself and go, I love you every day. And you said, this is an alternative, didn't you? You suggested it for me. And yes, it really is an alternative. And it's a lovely, lovely thing to do. But again, anytime, anytime, just stop and say, to yourself and I do it out loud you know looking at myself is quite difficult for me to do but that's powerful but just to stop and say it isn't mm -hmm. it how can we love you today maybe hands on heart and go what do I need today what do I need right now? right you know and maybe just you can't see I've got my hands on my heart I can't see um but sometimes it is just to stop and tune in isn't it you know it's, and, we, and we don't do that enough and it is like I love that you shared that and it's such a small thing but it's so it can be so powerful because yeah, yeah like there's you know and a lot of people maybe don't like affirmations because sometimes it feels like and I get it because sometimes it feels like you're saying these things but th there has to be a belief behind it and if you're in a place where you're not believing that about yourself then what you know it's like you also then have like you then I feel like sometimes that can make it worse because you, you can feel like um, there's a lack of integrity around what you're doing. But if you instead kind of flip it and say, how can I love you? That opens the door to stuff coming through, insights coming through, wisdom coming through. And it kind of takes you off like of having to say something that might not be accurate in the moment and allowing yourself just to be like gentle with yourself. You're showing yourself that compassion. Sometimes it's also at the same time doing a little bit of inner child work because you're you're coming to um, take care of something inside of you that needs taking care of without even really realizing it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and it's so funny when I told you that I knew, like I even said, like, I'm like, I needed to hear this for myself yeah. and to come back to that for myself. And it's so funny yeah. that, you know, we did that Reiki session and you and I talked about this a little bit before, but like you opened up and you trusted, you didn't necessarily know, you just knew this might be helpful for me right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm open to that, whatever mm -hmm. it is I need to explore, whatever's going to come up because often we don't even realize what it is that is inside of us because it's buried in our nervous system and you know with these deep emotions a lot of times negative emotion that we you know don't realize but then it's affecting our day to day because we're operating subconsciously that's how we operate and so anyways i feel like i needed that too like me just sending you reiki i feel like and me saying that to you it's like also letting the universe know, I think I need this for myself too. And it, I went through a whole like thing last week where tying into what you said about like things coming back up again, like repeating patterns or repeating lessons. And I was in a place of not fe feeling like, you know, what have I done all this work for? Like, was it all for nothing? Mm -hmm. Like, I really felt like that. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I feeling like like this I feel like I've done absolutely nothing right now and mm -hmm. it wasn't until I let myself feel that then then I opened up to maybe some answers around why mm -hmm. I was feeling that way yeah, so yeah. it's and, and, I, and you're right aren't you sometimes we can feel we're getting mm -hmm. nowhere or we've gone backwards and that's that's sort of okay isn't it you know sometimes I feel I mean, my recent surgery, I felt I took a big step back because it was a big shift forward because having the second surgery and everything changed a lot in a forward way. But I also felt because I had to stop lots of things, mm -hmm. I had to take that step back. My emotions were all over the place as well, understandably so. I felt I'd gone back as well. And again, a reminder, you know, even a step back or a step still is still 
a step forward, I believe, you know, but it doesn't right. feel like it at the time. So it's to remind yourself, isn't it? And and I love that you said about that, you know, it's like doing a bit of inner child work. You know, your your lovely little sentence about how can I love you today? I do feel that I'm talking to little Nadine when I say that. What do you need? What, do you mm -hmm. want? what can I do to help? You know, when I worked with the nursery children, you know, I would I would say when they were frustrated or whatever was going on, you know, tantrums and tears and everything, they'd go, what can I do? What, mm -hmm. what can I help? And they don't they don't know the answer necessarily, but that's okay. But because someone has a lot, maybe it just stops a little bit. And we can do that for ourselves, can't we? You know, it doesn't matter if you, I mean, I didn't know the answer to that. How, how can I love you today? I don't find the answer immediately. Oh, do this, do that. Because it's not about doing. It is about feeling and saying that, isn't it? And putting it out there. And then something might come up later on and go, oh, that is loving and kind to myself. Yeah. But it's not an, it's not an immediate answer. It's not immediately to be doing something, but just sharing that love like we do for children so easily and so readily don't we for ourselves whether we mm -hmm. look at that as any child work for our little selves or whether we look at that in the now you know but people probably don't do that you know what do you need today what do i need today take a moment and tune in and i would encourage people to do that as many times a day mm -hmm. as they can because it's really really and get used to that practice of tuning in and asking yourself whether the answers come or not doesn't matter exactly what you said when i you know have that reiki with you i didn't really know i spouted out i was doing don't I start spouted out a lot of feelings and stuff and everything and you take it all in and everything but i didn't really know what i wanted or needed mm -hmm. i didn't know what was going to happen but it's putting it out there isn't it and just that was totally so for me especially it's totally doing nothing to receive and it's so so valuable isn't it so i, I love that so thank you for that thank yeah uh, and I think, like, I want to go back to what you were saying about, like, even with your sur your surgery and coming up, what was coming up for you around that, and you felt like you had gone backwards, and it's kind of like going back into, like, your first surgery, maybe, of, like, you know, all the feelings that were there, and why, why maybe am I feeling this way, because I've been here before, so why should I still be feeling this way, yeah. but it's still... Yeah. You know, it's not to negate everything you're going, you know, it's, I feel like it, it's always for, we might think in the moment, it's like, oh, we shouldn't be here because we've, we've, we've experienced this, we've sifted through it, we've sorted our emotions, we've processed them and released them. So why are we back here again? But it's like, it's for a new perspective on it. Like you're coming in Seriously. at a, a different perspective. And then there's also the element of that just kind of came through when you were sharing this that always before we expand before we grow there's a contraction so it's kind of like we take a step back and then we're propelled forward because that step back is like kind of like gathering up everything yes. we've totally. learned about ourselves yes. so that we can then move forward with that wisdom mm -hmm. and apply yeah. it versus just knowing it and yeah. like, then what do you do? It's not about like, it's about, yeah, letting the wisdoms come through and like the knowing about the deeper knowing about ourselves. but then it's more yeah. about the, the application process of that, like truly mm -hmm. integrating it and applying it. So I feel yeah. like that is sometimes why we're, we're brought back to to review things again, but it's our conditioning that makes us feel bad about it. Cause it's like, oh, I've been here. I, like, so, oh, that's supposed to negate everything I've done. No, like even I know this, but in, oops, in the moment, like I was still having those feelings. It's still like, it's still okay to have those feelings. Yeah. It's like, I needed to go through that and, and understand. And even like the fact that this, the inner child is coming through, like, you know, mm. for me, what I identified for myself, why I was having those feelings, like I, and I also, by the way, like sometimes we can't identify these things on our own. It's like through, like, yes. you know, you allowed me to like send you Reiki and we talked through things. And sometimes we identify, that's how we identify things. And it's like, yeah. when we are open and sharing what we're going through, I feel like that's when somebody else might be able to see in us something that we can't see in the moment. And for me, that was like sharing what I was going through with a trusted group of friends and like having it identified that I was like for the first time in my life, not like 
distracted and not to say distracted, not having to take care of anybody else but myself. Yeah. yeah. And so, so I wasn't like, and not that I, that I see that as a distraction because I do have that like natural nurturing quality. It's also in my astrology, Venus and Cancer, which is Cancer. Where I also forgot to say that about this energy too. We might take on those qualities of like nurturing, but maybe it's mm -hmm. ourselves we need to nurture right now yeah. and yeah. open up to and be gentle with and all mm -hmm. of that. So all that to say was that I hadn't even realized that myself that here I am now at a point in my life where I'm, it's just me. I'm not in a relationship. I'm, you know, my kids are off on their path and I'm just here by myself at 54 for the first time in my life. And, you know, it's scary. Yeah. And I was like feeling all the feels about it and feeling yeah. bad about it. And, no, you know, no. but actually now I feel grateful for that experience of, yeah. Yeah. and that awareness brought you know to my attention so yeah and I, and I think it is isn't it people might be going through similar to you you know it is that I don't know in, I don't know if it's the same in your part of the world but we call it empty nest mm -hmm. syndrome you know yeah. there are women of a certain age you know when the children are getting off their hands they have some freedom they have some time you know not in a relationship maybe you know things like that you have had a lot of changes in your life recently haven't you you know some that you've chosen some that you haven't but i believe that this is your time mm -hmm. you know this is your time and uncomfortable as it might feel this is your time to there is the space around you there is that i don't have to do anything for anyone else and how strange that feels and so many people can probably relate to what you've just said there you know because they might be going through it they might be feeling they need it because you can make it happen for yourself mm -hmm. can't you? you know mm -hmm. sometimes we need to sometimes it happens and we haven't chosen it but it is there for a reason that we don't always realize isn't it and to embrace that and to go that is the time to pause like you say that pause moment which we're all uncomfortable with mm -hmm. and know that there's something trust that something brilliant is coming out of that uncomfortableness and sometimes it is, you know, that we're repeating and we're going, oh, I should be doing this better. I should know this. Why am I doing it again? You know, but sometimes that is you've got, you've got, you know, you personally have that lovely space now. You're probably going to get some repeated lessons coming in, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Because you're in a place to deal with it differently now. And, and that's okay, isn't it? That's maybe yeah. really good for you. So it's, it's fascinating, isn't it, how the repeating comes in, you know. And I do, you know, Trish, and I've shared it with lots of people, that with my cancer diagnosis, I was very oh God, disheartened, and obviously, for obvious reasons. But, but also going, why do I need this? You know, looking at the universe, I'm always looking at what's it all about? What's the lesson? Why has this happened? You know, like people yeah. do. Yeah. And I was, I said it so many times, didn't I, you know. I don't, I've done so much work on myself. I've healed so much. I've come a long way. Why do I need this? What lessons are they that I need to hear now? You know, I was very frustrated at the time. You were, um, and going, you were cross. cross. You were cross. I was cross, yeah. So she eventually laughed when I say that. I was. I was angry. <laughs> really angry and confused. And, and I wasn't doing, some people go, did you say why me? I never said why me. I said, why not me? Because why, why wouldn't it be me? I just was trying to make sense of why it's happening to me now. And... I was already trying to see the good to come out of it, but I couldn't see it to start with. But I do know now that it was because I'm in a different place. Like you've said, you know, you have a different perspective on things sometimes when they repeat. Um, I was a different person, a different place. Yes, all that work I'd done in the past, there was a reason for that mm -hmm. to come back and we do it again because I had new tools. I dipped into my karma self method massively. Yeah to yeah. help myself and I'm so grateful that I had that I have wonderful people around me you know especially you who is there to help me you know you were you know more recently in my life so this has come at a time when I can reach out to people to help me mm -hmm. tools to help me the universe to help me and myself you know because I am a different person than I was years ago when maybe these things came before you know I'm not saying I had a cancer diagnosis before but the things that it's triggered and brought up in me you know the panic right. and the fear and the anxiety you know I can handle it in a different way now and there's different things coming up so I do understand a bit more why mm -hmm. still don't always like it but but there is a reason isn't it for this repeating repeating and and as we've talked about before that unlearning old ways I'm not I'm not doing things the same way as I did before and that and that's a blessing isn't it so yeah and that it's you know it's a reminder that it's okay if 
you're back in a spot where you thought like you you had done the work already because yeah. yes and there's always there's always more there's always and healing you know if we're talking about healing because that's what we're really talking about mm -hmm. is not linear it's a spiral and it's yeah. you know it's always so that you can come back and learn or you know learn another piece of the puzzle another you know uh, a deeper truth um a different part that you hadn't been able to see before because you mm -hmm. kind of you know move through that other part already but it's so you're not we might think we're in the same spot but we're not like yeah. it's just yeah. something that you know might feel like we are in that moment because we see everything that we already know and then it's when we realize wait like but there's more to this than what I'm seeing. Yeah. And yeah. I wouldn't have been able to see that had it not been for everything I've already been through with this. Yeah. So yeah. it's that such, such and yeah. I, you know, love how you have shared everything about like, as you go through this diagnosis and your, your treatment and how like much it has changed and, you know, kind of opened you up to a deeper understanding of like things that maybe you hadn't looked at before in your life yeah. or yeah. like that were parts that maybe you know that yeah that you wouldn't have explored otherwise so i feel like mm. yes mm. like you didn't ask for that to happen but it's like what what you do with it now that you're living it and it's not to say that it's easy because it's not no, no at no. all and it, and it is something you know but but i say that as well you know it is that reminder and i want to say it again because it, i think it's so important for people to hear it doesn't have to be all hard work i am really right. this is one of the reasons i am learning so much now that actually i do make things really hard for myself and i don't have to sometimes it is to be easier that's a big lesson that i am learning i'm being shown again and it's so interesting that you say you know how we come we get something repeated and something mm -hmm. we notice things in a different way you see things in a different way maybe hear things in a different way and it's exactly like that with your book that i read i dip in and out over and over again you'll love me wonderful book and every time i dip in i see something i haven't seen before i notice something something pops out to me and i go oh, i've read that bit <laughs> and it's there with me because maybe i was ready to see here or notice something different and that surely i'm sure everyone can relate to that because it happens all the time doesn't it oh i didn't notice that last time i didn't right. notice that before yeah and it it happens doesn't it so i just think you know your book as everyone knows i don't read it the way that you meant to maybe from the front to the back but it is i dip in and out and i do i read the same bits again and i go oh i don't remember that and i well, love that <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, our, t our tendency is to read a book from front to back, like from cover to cover. But like, even with this book, I wrote that with the intention that it's not like that yeah, you feel good, intuitively good. to come into a certain spot and get some sort of like wisdom. And I feel like people yeah. shared that's how they've been using it. Yeah. And I love that. And even I have forgotten, you know, I go back in and check in it once in a while. I'm like, oh, that's I need to hear yeah. that today. So, yeah. you know, it's like it's. I don't know. It's so it, I'm curious to like if you want to share something because I think you said you have something. I have, yes, I've got it in the love in your poetry book. Okay. There is the three, isn't it? There's the Love Me original, da, 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 da. there's the poetry, and there is the meditation book as well, isn't there? There's the three. So I encourage everybody to look at them, go into them. But this is what we talk about, isn't it? That's what that's what started off these chit chats. And in the poetry book, yes, I have found a lovely poem that I would love to read out. Um, which is exactly what we're talking about. It's called, Re We Repeat What We Don't Heal. Um, so yeah, again, and this is gonna really, really hit home to people because when you put it in poetry, it's so, so concise, isn't it? So yes, I'm going to read it out for you. So, <laughs> we repeat what we don't heal. As much as we want to, we can't rush our healing. Healing is not linear, more like a spiral. And our soul will offer us a repeat lesson until we learn it. In all ways, we need to hear that healing is not a straight line repeatedly. To counteract our conditioning that we always need to be okay with our broken hearts swept up and tossed in the garbage and on to the next. 
doesn't work that way. We actually have to feel it, process it, grieve the loss, work through it, and face our part in it to make the necessary changes towards our growth. Healing requires our courage, our humility, and vulnerability to be in our truth, to be in our imperfections, to do better when we know better. Thank you, Maya Angelou. <laughs> Healing requires that we understand the truth, that the work, our inner work, is never finished. There is always more to move through until our soul's evolution is complete. And that's repeat what we don't heal. So I just, I get chills when I read that. Thank when you I've read for that reading so many that. Times. Oh, it's just, it's so beautiful. And it, it just to pick out a few points there, you know, we actually have to feel it, process it, grieve the loss. I mean, that's big, isn't mm -hmm. it? Grieving when we change, you know, every time we change, there is grief involved, isn't there? Work through it and place our part in it. You know, we're responsible. We can do things. We have done things, you know, just recognising that is so, so powerful, isn't it? And And to know that it is that where you've got that, well, we've just sweep up our broken hearts and get on to the next thing. No, we don't. You know, we need to feel that, don't we? And much as it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, it's important, isn't it, not to rush on and to have that because we will get repeats. But it's okay not and not to be so, I mean, this is a big thing, as you know, you know, to, to not be so scared of everything all the time is a big thing that I want to share with people because that's how I feel. I'm not so scared of my feelings. That's why I wanted to rush on all the time and not, not do the work. And, right. and in that poem, it might sound like, oh, we've got to do hard work and it's going to come up and it's all over the place. And it doesn't have to be hard work. Yeah. It can yes. be the, the healing, the growth, because it's not just healing, is it? It's growth, it's moving forward, it's how we grow. Um, can be by just stopping, pausing, receiving, listening, walking in nature, like you say. That can be the work. It can be joyous. It can be easy. Mm -hmm. And that, as I say, is, is what I'm recently being given as a gift to realise that that is how easy it can be. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be hard. Yes, there is some things that are going to come through, maybe in that process of pausing, that might be uncomfortable. But the whole point of it is is to allow ourselves the the processing and releasing of whatever the negative emotions is usually what it is around whatever that's coming up that's uncomfortable because a, a lot of times i mean in fact all the time we're operating subconsciously and those negative emotions are buried in our subconscious so that's why we get triggered that's you know hear everybody talking yeah. about being triggered yeah. it's because yeah. It's not at the surface level. If it was at the surface level, we'd be able to to manage our emotions, but in in cir certain circumstances. But because it's at the subconscious level, we might not even be aware of it. And yep. you know, we might be aware of part of it, but then there's always something deeper that's attached to that. So, and I feel like you know, I I wrote a series of posts that I haven't put out yet, but it's like why I talk about healing so much. Because healing is just the, the foundation for our growth. Yeah. It's like we can't we can't just grow. We have to kind of um, everything that's happened to us in our life that has given us some sort of emotion around it is offering that emotion is data. It's information, and whether mm -hmm. it's positive or negative, um, a lot of times we tend to go towards the negative emotions. That's where we're you know because we're just it's just in our conditioning and it's in our um, you know, we're hearing more and more people talk about the nervous system and how that is like really, you know, regulating that is really like key and essential in, in our relationships because all that stuff is in our subconscious and we, we, we don't operate or we operate from that, but we don't consciously have that awareness. So it's by allowing ourselves to, to heal, to, to have that space for whatever it is to come through and then processing those feelings and actually feel it because instead of pushing it away, which is our tendency to yeah. try to just push it away and keep moving forward, but eventually yeah. it's going to come back again in another form. Yeah. And yeah. we see all the time where, you know, like whether it's, you know, the passing of a loved one or 
whatever it might be that um, happens to us, it's not just that that current event. It's everything we haven't healed before that that's that we're that we're navigating. So it's every relationship that might have been broken that we just like moved on to the next or whatever that we're feeling in that grief. Yeah, it's layers upon layers. And so it's like, that's why I think it's so important. Like you said, it sounds like it's hard, but it's not it doesn't have to be it's Mm -hmm. it's really allowing yourself to space space is really what we need to just to just be in the in a moment yeah. and give ourselves that that is the key isn't it give yourself that space and and it is and even when you said a uh, little bit about about the negative emotions and things like that you know as an example of that you know tears can often be seen as negative but actually they are a release and they're freeing and they're beautiful you know um so again it's just again maybe reframing that a little bit you know it might hurt it might be painful but it's good and we get through it and we learn and we mm-hmm. feel braver and we feel stronger and we feel more powerful you know but you know tears as a very simple example you know it is that kind of all oh, if we cry we must be hurting i cry from joy and love quite often right. you know it's not always painful but also even if it is painful to start with it's a process and it moves forward and those tears are released and they are good aren't they so that's the way to look at it sometimes isn't it to to feel that whatever we're going through is for the good um and and it's good it is always isn't it you know it's like if you're in a scary film you know when it finishes you go oh, you know it's it's quite nice to sometimes have yeah. those emotions and then know we're okay at the end we got through it yay <laughs> that's right quite and it, and it works that way, doesn't it? So sometimes it's, and people do it on purpose, like going on the roller coasters, you know, that um, they do it on purpose to give themselves that, oh, it's terrible feeling, but it's great when it When stops. it's over it's with. Kind of thing. Yeah. It, it, maybe it's human nature, I don't know. But I mean, you wrote that poem, obviously when you were going through certain emotions, certain things going on in your life. Yeah. And as we think about the repeating and repeating, as I read that out, can, can you relate that to stuff that's going on in your life now? Is it is it the same kind of yeah. thing, or do you feel that? Uh, I mean, exactly like what I was saying about like what was even coming up last week, and I was feeling, mm-hmm. you know, I was just in this place of like, why, why am I feeling this way? Like I shouldn't be feeling this way because like I have done so much work, so maybe I haven't done work like mm-hmm. I thought I did, and mm-hmm. maybe everything was for nothing if I did, and I've wasted all this time on what, and really kind of, which I don't like to do, but I will admit, like, I was, like, beating myself up, and it's like, mm-hmm. and then I know better, so why am I doing this, and then it kept, like, perpetuating into this hole of just, like, a shame, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's like, that's again another area but it's like if that's the true feeling that's coming up i need to explore why why am i feeling like that and um and that it's okay okay it's part of me like it's another layer of growth and you know realizing that yeah i am in a vulnerable place right now and i didn't even think about that aspect and so i think coming back to that original point that you brought up about how can I love myself today mm-hmm. like I needed that message too and I didn't even like I hadn't realized it yeah. yet because I hadn't gone through everything I went through last week yet but it's like I needed that too and I feel like a lot of times when we're doing this and we're having these conversations like what is this saying like we teach what we need to learn ourselves yes. Yes. and so and changes, you know I'm not exempt from any of this yeah. or neither of us are just because we're talking about it mm-hmm. it's like and also just like if we post about something too, I feel like it's not necessarily what we might be going through, but it's it's like at some degree we've gone through it. Yes. And I feel like that's why I talk about and we talk about healing so much is because it is the um the gateway to our growth of understanding mm-hmm. who we are and being empowered in our lives as a result. And we can't get there always like or we can't we our power is more easily taken away from us when we're not in a place of knowing who we are so i think healing allows us to know who we are on a deeper level and be confident in that i don't know would you agree totally totally it gives us that power it gives us that strength doesn't it and that knowing and that's so valuable isn't it and i feel you know that it's so so 
so beneficial, isn't it? Just to go through so much and then you come out the other side feeling like, yeah, I understand myself a bit better now. I feel stronger. I feel braver. I feel all these things. And that's, a, for me personally, that's a lovely way to feel. That's partly, I think, what it's all about. So that it gives me that, you know, and, I, and I'm grateful for that, really grateful for that. Um, so, so there's a lot, we've shared quite a lot of different ways that we can try things. So I'd encourage people to try one, <laughs> try one of the things we've said, especially if it's the pause, have a little bit of a pause, you know. I, sorry, you were going to say. I was just, I'm reminded as like something to specifically say, like, I mean, there's that question, but you have some of your recorded meditations and I don't know if the gentle questioning is one of them. But like just asking, I think that's something you help people like process through, yes. um, like yes. as a guided method of one of your yes. calmer self methods. But I feel like that can be so powerful in like allowing your space, allowing yourself that space to just be and let, yes. we might not be able to identify what it is that's going on on right now so i feel like that gentle questioning i know for me it's helped yeah, deeply um yeah. if, for you know it, to a, a very um i don't know it's been very, very profound in my healing is like to have that space to question because mm. then you're not kind of like trying to identify it. you're allowing the identification to come through or to you know that information to come through to you Yes. through your intuition yes. and or you know yes. your soul speaking yes. by allowing yes. that space you're you're absolutely right and it is you're right it's part of my calm self method it sits very nicely mm -hmm. with sitting with difficult emotions which is something else that i do with my clients so the gentle questioning and done in that safe space in meditation that kind of thing so it works but it isn't something that you can find on my youtube channel as i think because it does need someone to do it with you at least to start mm -hmm. with um so it's not so people can look there's there's variations on my youtube channel and everywhere but that specific you won't find there because as i said it needs a bit of hand holding i think but lovely that you brought it up and actually a way that you can do it yourself is with exactly that question that we talked about you know to actually sit there quietly peacefully hands on heart it only takes a second doesn't have to take long but tune in breathe maybe a few breaths and just go how can i love you today yeah you know, that's gentle question isn't it in its essence so that's that's the way you can do it um and not expect the answer to come straight away not to think you have to rush off and do something you put it out there to the universe i always say things out loud there's power in that yeah um, and so that is that is people can try gentle questioning in that way if they want to so thank you for bringing that up because it's really important isn't it so it's it's wonderful and and as i say you know the book get the book see what talks to you see what talks to you more than once you know definitely where can people get this from trish where can they get your lovely book it's from? available on amazon worldwide so wherever you are you should be able to find it there um if you search love me and then tm campbell because there's lots of titles by that yeah. apparently <laughs> but um oh i was just gonna say Say something and now I forgot uh, what it was. I lost it. That's um, okay. I'll jump. I'll jump oh, in while you get it I back. I know what it was. I know what it was. You said put it out, speak it out to the universe, and I just want to remind because I'm. I was cut, or reminded recently that you are the universe. Like we are the universe. It's we it's, are. it's are. within us. So yeah. it's yeah. you might think it's out there, but it's really you know yeah. another version of ourselves we're speaking to that yes. that knows that that's tuning into you isn't it yeah Your intuition heart center and i love that so thank you for reminding us all about that because that's it we have all the answers in there don't we we just need to listen and that's we why it's important to, to allow that pause that space yes. for you know to for mm -hmm. those that to come through yeah. yeah and we are and we are doing exactly what we're talking about here so we're repeating stuff we repeated we're saying it again so people get the message in a different way yeah and i love that we're doing that quite naturally today yeah um also i'm going to repeat something we said earlier also that idea that sometimes we need a bit of help with this and support and there's people you know i do what i do trish you just beautifully mentioned 
what I do, part of what I do is the gentle questioning, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But, you know, the Reiki sessions that I have with you are so powerful and so valuable. So those, I know that if people can go to your website, they can look and book in, can't they? So it can be done with distance Reiki, um, but it's so, so valuable. I get so much from it and I don't have to do anything, <laughs> which I love. So and I so highly we do chat a little bit. We do we share, you know, oh, kind of did. like the stuff comes through before yeah. and after. And yeah. it's, I yeah. think it's, you know, such Definitely. a lovely process. It's an easy process. That, um, that's what I'm trying to get across. It's so easy and yeah. it's powerful. And I've, and I've got to say in the latest session, it happens quite often, but in the latest session, we've never a bit doggy help, didn't we? So, yeah, the animals love the Reiki too. Don't yeah, they, they do. <laughs> that was so cute yeah i love it so we get all that um, as well but it is it is it's just getting that message across to people yes things are repeated you know that is life that's what happens it's all good um and sometimes just to take a step back and listen and let let the universe do what it needs to do and the new universe that's inside us yeah and i also want to share too that something that helps me and i have in my toolbox is your so it's that is available is like kind of like you can um, get it in your meditation shop, some guided meditations for um, there's various topics or um, avenues of meditation, I guess, like that yes. you can use them for. Yes. And I've used all of them. And yes. um, it's just so valuable to have. And it's like, you know, such a such a great tool to have if you're you know looking for somewhere to start or to reintroduce meditation back in or or find that space for yourself to just give yourself whatever it is you need but you're not quite sure yeah. i feel like it, it comes yeah. through in that way as well so yes yeah. yeah definitely i mean yeah you're absolutely right there's guided meditations on my website karma self website in the meditation shop and it's not i like a guide i like sometimes for someone else's voice to lead and sometimes yeah um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do too. Nice. Sometimes we need that. Yeah. Like we can't mm -hmm. find that settled place mm -hmm. ourselves and it helps to have somebody to, to bring us there. And yeah. Yeah. you do yeah. that so beautifully. Like your voice is just so calming and that's why you do like what you do so well and help so many people. Yeah. And if she didn't say it, it's calmerself.co.uk right that's right yes thank you yes do the technical bit <laughs> <laughs> so but, yeah. I, so when, yeah. so what's your website say that one out loud uh this is chriscampbell.com so, so there you go find my reiki people can have a look around find all the other stuff that's going on there get the books get some meditations boom, boom, and then we're off but yeah i honestly feel i could talk to you about this forever repeat 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 i know um, but I'm, a, I'm aware that we're going on a bit and i know that people have things to do so thank you for everyone that's joined us live um please put some questions down afterwards if you want us to answer them because we always look don't we yeah when we put this out for them but thank you, Trish. This, this is so, so powerful. Isn't yeah. It? So we all need we all need I'm so grateful that we get to um, have these conversations. And I know, um, you know, we, we share our own experiences and, and there are experiences, but I know that like there's bits and pieces that people can relate to and, and draw parallels in their own life. So that's why yeah. we talk about it so openly. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, we want to just do more of that. So I can't wait till our next one. So grateful for you. Yeah, me too. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.